Sounds Cassette. In the latest update, the Soviet Union got a new top tier fighter. Yes lads, today we're talking about the Flogger K. The MiG-23 MLD was the ultimate fighter variant of the MiG-23. The main focus of this variant was to improve the maneuverability, especially during high angles of attack, something which the older MiG-23 variants really did struggle with. The wings were fitted with new vortex generators, as well as notch leading edge slats. They also had a new flight control system, something similar to a very, very early flyby wire. It was kind of similar to the one used on the MiG-29. It improved handling and safety in high angle of attack manoeuvres. Another new toy the Soviets added was the Sapphire 23 MLA-2 radar. It had better range, reliability and resistance to ECM. It also has a lockdown shootdown mode, basically the Soviet equivalent of Pulse Doppler. This allows the MiG-23 MLD to be pretty potent when using semi-active radar homing missiles in game. And finally, along with the downward firing chaff flare pods in the under fuselage, we also have a new 30 round upward firing pod mounted near the tail of the aircraft. This gives you quite a lot of flares, at least by Soviet standards, and drastically increases the survivability of the aircraft, especially with countermeasures being buffed this patch. While in real life, the MLD was hardly built, as the MiG-29 was entering production, but in game, it is certainly a very powerful addition. But enough about real life, what about in War Thunder? Well in game, the MiG-23 MLD is a rank 7 battery-rating 11.0 jet fighter located in the Soviet territory. To unlock this jet, you're going to have to grind out 400,000 research points before purchasing it for a cost of 1,080,000 silver lions. The crew training cost in this jet is also pretty steep, at 310,000 silver lions. Being a top tier fighter, I'd always recommend purchasing the Expert in Ace qualifications, costing 1,080,000 silver lions and 3,200 golden eagles. In terms of repair cost, you can expect to pay 7,528 silver lions when fully upgraded. Going on to the rewards, and when playing in realistic battles and with a premium account, you can expect an RP modifier of 488% and a silver lion modifier of 420%. In terms of customization, you'll have a single camouflage available for golden eagles. So, with the MiG-23M already in game, as well as the MiG-27M, is the MLD even worth grinding for? Stick around for the rest of the video to find out. The MLD is powered by the Tomansky R35-300 engine. When at military power, it produces 7,110 kilograms of thrust. And when after burning, that power increases to 10,320 kilograms of thrust. This can get the MiG-23 up to a top speed of 2,358 km per hour at an altitude of 13,000 meters. However, in game, this is pretty much unachievable unless you're climbing to space and away from the enemies. In an average game where you're flying fully low, you will rip your wings off at a speed of Mach 1.25. On the deck, this is around 1,500 km per hour. Very fast indeed, making this plane one off, if not the fastest jets on the deck. The climb rate of this jet is also insane, at 220 meters per second. When carrying missiles, I have frequently done a zoom climb at Mach 1.1 and maintain that same Mach 1.1 in a 30 degree climb. You can go from sea level to 10,000 meters in the space of a minute. It is absolutely insane just how powerful this jet is. But the speed and acceleration is only one side of the story with the MiG-23 MLD. As I mentioned in the introduction, this plane was designed to be the dogfighting variant of the MiG-23, and as a result, it is highly manoeuvrable. This plane of course features a swept wing design. This means when you're going fast, the wings are swept backwards, but when you're wanting to manoeuvre, the wings will sweep forwards, giving you more lift, hence more manoeuvrability. While this is great in real life and in theory, however in game, most jet combat now takes place at very high speeds, and one-on-one -on -one dogfights don't really exist because someone, either a person on your team, or a person on the enemy team, will fire a missile at you or your enemy. More likely your teammates team killing you, let's be honest. While you hardly ever will get the chance to show off the manoeuvrability of the MLD, it is a very good feature to have. But due to the meta being high and top speed at the minute, the power and acceleration of the MiG-23 MLD does make you one of the best top tier fighters in the game. The speed, as well as the missiles, which we'll cover next.
We then come on to the weapons, and we'll start with the radar. As I said in the introduction, the MiG-23 MLD has an advanced model of the Sapphire 23 radar system. This has both radar and IRST, or infrared search and track. It also has a maximum range of 54 kilometers, as well as Lockdown, the Soviet equivalent of Pulse Doppler, IFF, also known as Identify Friend or Foe, BVR mode, Beyond Visual Range, and ACM, which is a close range maneuvering radar system. This radar is pretty good, the lockdown mode allows you to use semi-active radar homing missiles effectively, even when the enemies are below you, similar to the feature found on the British FDR-2 and the Japanese F4E Kai. We then come on to the stock weapon of the MiG-23, the 23mm GSH-23L cannon. This is a single gun, but with two barrels. It has an insane fire rate of 3,400 rounds per minute, but a very low ammunition count of only 200 rounds. This high fire rate, small ammunition count, as well as the low velocity of the projectiles, makes this gun very hard to be accurate with. We can also carry gun pods. These are the same 23mm GSH pods, but they are mounted on the wings. While you do have a lot more ammunition, 500 rounds per gun, they still have the same problems as your stock cannon. High fire rate, relatively low ammunition, as well as a low muzzle velocity. We can also carry three different types of bombs in this aircraft. Up first, we have 100kg bombs, with 38kg of TNT, giving them a destructive radius of 4 meters. We also have 250kg bombs, with 160kg of TNT, giving them a destructive radius of 10 meters. And finally, we have the 500kg bombs, with 340kg of TNT, giving them a destructive radius of 14 meters. While these bombs can be quite useful, if you are looking for an aircraft for ground attack, then the MiG-27M is your go-to choice, so I don't really see why you'd be using bombs in the MiG-27 MLD, especially seeing that this variant was made for dogfighting. We also have several different types of rockets that we can carry. Up first, we have the very basic S5Ks. These travel at 570 meters per second, and have a high explosive anti-tank warhead, containing 572 grams of TNT. This is very low, giving them very low post-penetration damage, as well as a very mediocre 150mm of penetration at all ranges. We then have the S8KO rockets. These travel slightly faster than the S5s at 650m per second, and have a higher explosive filler, with 1.69kg of TNT. They again use a high explosive anti-tank warhead, giving them 420mm at all ranges. And finally, we have the S24B rockets. These contain a TNT warhead of 25.5 kilograms of TNT, giving them insane amounts of penetration. They can penetrate 80 millimeters of armor at all ranges and all angles, making them one-shot killing machines. However, they do travel much slower than the previous two types of rockets, at only 410 meters per second. Kind of like the bombs earlier, if you do want a ground attack aircraft, use the MiG-27. The S-24Bs are probably your go-to rockets if you do want to ground attack, but why would you even bother? We then have the KH-23M rockets. These are MCLOS guided, or manual control line of sight. You have to guide them to the target with the nose of the aircraft. This leaves you vulnerable in the terminal guidance sector, as you essentially have to go head on to what you're shooting at. If you're targeting an enemy air defense system, then you'll basically have to fly directly towards them, making you an easy target. The missiles are strong, however, containing 96 kilograms of TNT, giving them 97mm of explosive penetration at all ranges and angles. We then come on to the plethora of earthworm missiles you can carry in this jet. We'll start with the infrared guided missiles. Up first, we have the R3Ss. These are AM9B equivalents and are pretty basic. You should never really use these apart from when stock. We then have the R13M1s. These are the upgraded missiles compared to the R13Ms. They have 20 Gs of maximum overload and a rear aspect lock range of 5.5 kilometers. You can kind of think of the R-13M1s as the Soviet version of the AM-9Js. They have pretty decent range, but aren't as manoeuvrable as the later R-60 missile, which we'll cover next. The R-60, like the other two missiles, is infrared guided and has a maximum lock range of 5km. It's widely considered that the R-60 is quite a short range missile, and this is shown in their smaller rear aspect lock range. The trade-off, however, is that the R-60 is more manoeuvrable, having a maximum overload of 30 Gs. It also has a larger seeker head, allowing it to be fired off bar sight and still maintain a track, effectively allowing you to lead a target. While they are quite lethal, they are by no means as lethal as they used to be, especially with the buff to countermeasures this patch. A single pop of flares, and this R60 will just go wherever it wants to, anywhere except the target aircraft. 
And that's it for infrared guided missiles I'm afraid. The MiG-23 MLD does not receive the R-60M missiles found on the MiG-27M. This may change in the future however, as the R-60s currently in game aren't performing very well. So just like the MiG-23M and the MiG-27M, the MiG-23 MLD may receive the R-60Ms in a future update. We then come on to a special set of missiles, the R-23s and the R-24s. Both have infrared and semi-active radar homing variants. The R-23T is an infrared guided air-to-air -air missile with a rear aspect lock range of 15 kilometers and an all aspect lock range of 2.3 kilometers. While the MLD does not receive the all aspect R-60Ms, you could consider the R-23Ts the R-60M equivalent. They have a maximum roll load of 20 Gs and a TNT warhead of 20.8 kilograms. As you can see, these missiles are massive and are work with a one shot anything they hit. We do have an upgrade though, the R-24T. This has the same TNT warhead, but has a maximum overload of 24 Gs. It also has a better range in the all back mode, being able to lock any target 4.3 kilometers away. This is very useful in head-on engagements, as you can lock a target from 4 kilometers away, fire it, and then start maneuvering. By the time the enemy knows what's going on, they're likely to get hit in the face by a 20 kilogram TNT missile, usually leading them going straight back to the hangar. We then come on to the R-23R, the radar guided version of the earlier R-23. These have the exact same parameters, except they are semi-active radar homing, meaning you must acquire a radar lock before firing the missile, and then hold that radar lock until the missile impacts. We then have the R-24R, which again has the exact same parameters as the R-24T, except it is a semi-active radar homing. Again, you must get a radar lock, fire, and then hold the radar. And that's it for the missile loadout on the MiG-23 MLD. As you can see here in this picture, these are some of my favourite loadouts. Typically in battle, I will take the two R-24Ts and the four R-60 missiles. The R-24Ts are my go-to missiles at the start of a game, as you can get pretty much an all-aspect lock. And the R-60s are what I use later in the furball. Both missiles are susceptible to flurs, however, so don't be surprised when firing all six missiles, you only get one or two kills as missiles have been seriously nerfed this patch. Before we get into the conclusion, let me know down below what you guys think about the MiG-23 MLD, and which helicopter tank, plane or ship, you guys would like to see reviewed next. In my opinion, the MLD is probably one of the best performing jets currently in the game, not in terms of its weapons, but certainly in terms of its performance. With its variable swept wings, it gives it great maneuverability at low speeds, and very low drag at high speeds. And even if you do find yourself at quite low speed, that massive engine with great acceleration basically acts like a rocket, getting you back up to transonic in a matter of seconds. The radar system, as well as the 72 flurs, do massively increase the effectiveness and survivability of this jet. To summarise though, the weapons, performance, flurs and radar, make the MiG-23 probably the best jet in the Soviet tech tree. While I still think that the JA-37 and the F-4EJK in the Japanese tech tree probably would beat this jet in a one-on-one -on -one dogfight, the MiG-23 certainly is a very, very strong jet in top tier at the minute, and I would certainly recommend grinding it if you are a fan of the Soviet tech tree. It is far more powerful than the MiG-23M or the MiG-27M, and frankly, leaves the MiG-21 bit in the dust. I had a lot of fun playing this MiG-23, and again, I would highly recommend grinding it. Alright lads, I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel. You can also leave a like and a comment, which again, also boosts me in the algorithm, helping my channel to grow. You can also follow me on Twitter, as well as Twitch. And if you're a huge fan of the channel, you can become a member of the YouTube channel, which will give you a unique icon next to your comment, in both comments under videos and on YouTube live streams. Once again, thank you very much for watching this far into the video lads, and I'll see you in the next one.